Welcome to Capelville United Methodist Church. On behalf of the people of God called Capelville, I thank you for worshiping with us. I'm Pastor Artura Eason Williams, and I'm here to just share with you a little bit about our church. We are in Southeast Memphis at the corner of Shelby Drive and Riverdale next to Walgreens. We are a neighborhood church. We are known for serving our community. We follow a vision statement that says simply to share abundant life in our community. And life is an acronym. The L is lifts up Jesus. The I invests in community. The F is for forming faith and faithfulness and the E embraces new people and new opportunities. We hope that you will find our service uh, an, an opportunity for you to truly worship God and for you to live into our motto, which is let's do life together. As you worship with us, I pray that you find God nudging you more and more to do life with us. Thank you. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Jesus is real. Jesus is real, Jesus is real, he's so good to me. God answers prayers, God answers prayers, God answers prayers, he's so good to me. He cares for me, he cares for me, he cares for me, he's so good to me. I praise his name, I praise his name, I praise his name, he's so good to me. He saved my soul, he saved my soul, he saved my soul, he's so good to me. God is so good, God is so good, God is so good, he's so good to me. Good morning, Capelville, my internet friends. My name is Yolanda Cutler, and I will be singing for you this morning the hymn of praise, trust, and obey. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us seal, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey. 
But we never can prove the delights of His love until all on the altar we lay. For the favor He shows and the joy He bestows for the them who will trust and obey. Trust and obey. But to trust and obey Then in fellowship sweet We will sit at His feet Or we'll walk by His side in the way What He says we will do Where He sits to trust and obey, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Call to Worship, Exodus 3, Romans 12. Holy, holy, holy. Holy God is here. Holy, holy, holy. Love has called us here. Holy, holy, holy. We gather to worship our holy God. Amen. Affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he should come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Prayer of Confession, Exodus 3, Romans 12, Matthew 16. In the midst of your holy presence, O God, we encounter a mystery deeper than the foundations of the earth. You are who you are, sacred and indefinable. Forgive us when we try to put you in a box or frame you in our own image. Help us as we allow your divine image to define and shape us. Speak mercy and grace to us when we deny the path before us and guide us with your sympathy. Love when we are unsure of how to follow. Strengthen us and give us the courage to say, Here I am, ready to love and serve. In your holy name we pray. Amen. All pray. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Words of Insurance. It is 3, Genesis 1. We are in the presence of the Holy One, whose holiness is in our very being. Rejoice and be glad, for in Christ's love, we are reminded of the, this divine truth. We are God's beloved creation. 
reclaimed for a holy path. Amen. Offertory prayer, Exodus 3, Romans 12. In gratitude for your amazing works in the world, we offer our gifts to further your work, Holy One. Bless us as you bless Moses before us, that we may be a blessing of your work, of your holy work. Guide ourselves and bless the offerings we bring that the world may be touched by your holy love. Good morning, everyone. My name is Marilyn Hathaway, and I am the president of the Capable United Methodist Women. Our UMW supports ministries for children, youth, and women in the United States and around the world. On UMW Sunday, we invite everyone to participate in the outreach mission of the UMW through a special offering called Candle Burning Missional Giving by donating a special honorarium or a memorial for family, friends, or other loved ones. On UMW Sunday, each gift will be listed and distributed with the worship service email, and a symbolic candle on the altar will be lit in honor or of or in memory of those you have chosen. Thank you for joining us with, in serving the needs of others. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. Matthew 25, 40. The deadline for your offering is September the 20th, 2020. So we hope that you will join us in um, celebrating this special day. And we hope that you will uh, help us to support ministries around the world with your offerings. Thank you. <laughs>
Welcome to our service Sunday, August 30th. Online friends and family, I will be singing My Life is in Your Hands by Kirk Franklin. I hope you enjoy it. You don't have to worry and don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Troubles, they don't last always. For there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken just lift your hands and say oh I know that I can make it I know that I can stand no matter what may come my way my life is in your hands You don't have to worry And don't you be afraid Joy comes in the morning Troubles, they don't last always For there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, Oh, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what, may come my way my life is in your hands with jesus i can take it with him i know i can stand no matter what may come my way my life is in your hands So when your test and trials, they seem to get you down. And all your friends and loved ones are nowhere to be found. Remember there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, Oh, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what, may come my way my life is in your hands with jesus i can take it with him i know i can stand no matter what may come my way my life is in your hands i know I know that I can stand No matter what may come my way My life is in your hands With Jesus I can take it With Him I know I can stand No matter what may come my way my life is in your hands
No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. My name is Darrell Eason Williams. Scripture reading, Exodus 3, verse 1 through 15. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire, from within a bush. Moses saw that through the bush was on fire. It did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight while the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he came, when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush. Moses, Moses, and Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that is is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And, and they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock 
and our Redeemer. Amen. Holy ground. Most people don't realize that they are always standing on holy ground. Take Moses, for example. Now, while I'm talking about Moses, I want you to think about a time in your life when God showed you God's self. Maybe you recognized it then. Maybe you are only realizing it now. But that moment is just one of your many holy ground stories. Moses' holy ground story starts many years before he sees a burning bush in Midian. He was born in Egypt at a time when Israelites were being persecuted just for being Israelites. There were just too many of them, the Egyptian government said. The Egyptian government was afraid that the Israelites would soon become the majority, so the government decided to make free people into slaves. Through oppression and harsh treatment, they hoped to slow the Israelite population growth. However, it seemed that the more the Israelites were oppressed, the more they grew in number. They multiplied and they spread. So the government made their lives bitter and tried to weaken their families. The king of Egypt ordered Israelite midwives to kill all the boys born to Israelite women. The midwives feared God and resisted that directive and let the boys live. This is holy ground. To correct the behavior of the disobedient midwives, Pharaoh ordered all boys younger than two years old to be killed. Moses was one of them. His mother kept him as long as she could and then she sent her three-month-old baby onto the river in a basket and watched him float away. Pharaoh's daughter rescued him, and though he was an Israelite, raised him as her own. Can you see the holy ground? Moses was raised as an Egyptian, but he knew who he was. He watched while Israelites were mistreated, and one day after watching an Egyptian beat a Hebrew, he killed the Egyptian and buried him in the sand. When Pharaoh discovered what Moses had done, he fled from Egypt to Midian and entered what seemed like a witness protection program. Moses started a new life, got married, had a kid. Forty years, 40 years go by. The king of Egypt died and the Israelites cried out to God for help. Now, if you were a betting person, you would not likely bet that God would send an escaped fugitive back to the place where he had been wanted for a 40-year-old murder to set God's people free. Moses could hardly believe it himself as God spoke to him through a burning bush saying, take off your sandals, take them off. You are standing on holy ground. Moses is <laughs> like, who's me? Who me? I, I am... Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Notice that God doesn't respond by telling Moses who Moses was. God responded by telling Moses who God is. God said, I will be with you. Well, who shall I say has sent me? Asked Moses. Say, I am, has sent me to you, is God's reply. Have you seen it yet? Have you remembered how and where God stood you up, even you, in spite of everything you have ever done? Have you remembered 
how and where God has stood you up on holy ground, equipped you, called you, asked you to follow him since the day you were born? Have you remembered it yet? One of my friends has the gift of prophecy and has spent many years afraid of using that gift out of fear of being different. But when she uses it, God's glory fills the room. Another one of my friends has a photographic memory. He reads a lot and remembers everything he reads and is able to make compelling arguments that help people expand their understanding of what it means to be a disciple. Several of my friends have the gift of relationships. They know how to listen to people with compassion and with empathy, and they know how to make themselves known to other folks. Some of my friends write compelling essays and books. Others have the gift of storytelling and can make us see even what we don't want to see just by telling a story. All of them are Christians who know just how much God has set them free. They also know that they have not just been freed from something, they have been freed for something, something more than just humming freedom songs to themselves. To be a Christian is to use our gifts and calling to help free other folks from bondage. Now, some of us are like Moses. God calls us and we can't imagine what we have to offer. We're afraid to be who we are called to be. In the Disney animated film, The Lion King, the spirit of Mufasa speaks one night to his prodigal son, Simba. Simba has been riding out in, hiding out in the deepest, darkest jungle, reclining in a life of selfishness and ease. He's forgotten that he was born to be king. The ghost of his father challenges him in his complacency, saying, you have become less than you are. Moses has hidden in Midian for 40 years. He has a good life, but he has become less than God, less than what God has called him to be. Moses has always been positioned to deliver God's people, but not in a fit of rage, but in accordance with God's good and perfect will. God calls us again and again and again, and we say, who, me? God says, yes, you, and we ask, well, who shall I tell them called me? The New Revised Standard Version translates Exodus 3.14 to read, God said to Moses, I am who I am. Terence Fratham in Exodus of the Interpretation Bible Commentary Series writes that this statement, I am who I am, in essence, is I will be God for you. I will be God for you. He says the force is not simply that God is or that God is present, but that God will be faithfully God for them. God will be faithfully God for you. Wherever God is being God, God will be the kind of God God is. Israel need not be concerned about divine arbitrariness or capriciousness. God can be counted on to be who God is. God will be faithful. To be a Christian is to trust God, to be who God is for us at all times and in all places. Once Moses accepted the life that God was offering him, a life lived on holy ground, a life lived in community with the God who would be God for him. 
God instead of any other gods. God would be God for him instead of Moses being God for himself. Once Moses accepted the life that God was offering him, a life lived on holy ground, then he no longer needed to fear because God could be counted on to be faithful. God had already been faithful, even when Moses was not. And here God was again reminding Moses, you are standing on holy ground. William Willimon says, all Christian leadership begins in God's determination to have people in motion helping God retake what is God's. So whether our mission is a person or a people, God calls all of us to let God's people go. This calling is holy ground. How is God letting you know, reminding you that you are always standing on holy ground? What is your holy ground story? You know, people are always telling me that I try to do too much. They say, I don't know how you do it. (laughs) And right now, even now, I know that God is changing some things in me. And it is scary at times. And it is painful. At the United Methodist Men meeting this past Saturday, Reverend Clark shared an upper room devotional that talked about pruning. From time to time, we get too comfortable and God has to cut away unfruitful areas so that we can reach our God-given potential, so that we can become more than we are. God wants us to be more dependent on God and less dependent on our own abilities, our own power. In fact, there's no such thing as our own power because even that belongs to God. God is God with us, constantly reminding us that we were made for each other. Just as God sent Moses to free the Israelite people, God also sent Moses to free himself, to build him into the kind of leader that he was always meant to be. God surrounds all of us with people who know how to do things that we don't, people who think differently, who have a diversity of gifts. God sends us to people who need our gifts, our ideas. God uses every one of us if we let go to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we can imagine, ask, or think. We are always, always standing on holy ground and in the presence of God's never-ending invitation Follow me. What's your holy ground story? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The doors of the church are always open. You may join Capelville United Methodist Church on profession of faith, transfer of membership, or rededication to the Christian life, please call Capelville United Methodist Church at 901-363-1859, or you can mail us a letter or email capelvilleunited at bellsouth.net. Let's do life together. As we prepare to go from this time of worship, I'd like to recognize August birthdays. Michaela Wilson, August 4th. Janice Woods, August 4th. Florence Brown, August 10th. Isdale Che, August 11th. Elijah Michael, August 17th. Kevin Walker, August 19th. Betsy Morrison, August 20th. Carolyn Miller, August 24th. Tashawn Perella Kassim, August 24th. Shawan Curry, August 25th. And Billy Lawson, August 31st. Happy birthday to our August members. And if you are celebrating an August birthday or anniversary, blessings to you from all of us. Hear now this benediction. 
The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. The Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace. The announcements. Public worship, because Shelby County remains in phase two of the back to business plan and considering that the majority of our congregation is in the high risk group, our leadership team has postponed reopening until the community has been in phase three for at least two weeks. Our leadership has decided that Sunday school classes and small groups may be permitted to meet at the church in the great hall or the gym. Meetings must be scheduled with the church office to avoid conflicts. All participants must com commit to hygiene practices, including mask wearing and social distancing, disinfecting the space used, including bathrooms, and returning any tables and chairs to the supply closet after the meeting. You may also choose to have a meeting outside the building with the same precautions taken. Worship with us on the Capelville UMC Facebook or worship by phone at 11 a.m. on Sundays by calling 901-522-5545. The replay is also available throughout the week. We also send the YouTube link by email and post it on our church website. Liturgists needed. If you are interested in serving as a liturgist for the worship service, please contact Maya Nicholson in the church office. Communion Sunday will be September the 6th. We will have drive-through communion element pick up on Saturday, September the 5th from noon until 1 p.m. If you would like individually packaged communion elements, just drive up to the church on Saturday, September the 5th, noon until 1 p.m. A church member will meet you at your car wearing a mask and gloves to distribute however many individual communion elements you need. The church office is open Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. through 2 p.m. The food pantry is open Tuesday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., except when there is a fifth Tuesday. Electronic giving. You can give to Capelville UMC anytime by going to www.capelvilleumc.org, click on e-giving, or by downloading the UMC Go app. You can also mail or bring your offering to the church during office hours, Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. through 2 p.m. Thank you.